A few releases ago, Brackets decided to include ESLint as a default plugin. And while ESLint can be extremely useful, what most people experienced was that when they wrote some JavaScript, it gave them a lot of errors. And that encouraged most people to either turn off the error display or turn off ESLint completely. But when configured correctly, it can actually be extremely useful and even help us prevent future errors. And in this video, I'm going to show how. ESLint is, as the name suggests, a so-called linting utility. And the idea is kind of like the lint filter in your dryer to remove all the lint and fluff from your clothes to prevent fires. The ESLint removes or makes you aware of all the small problems in your code before it actually catches fire. But the thing is, ESLint uses a lot of rules and it needs to be configured with all these rules. And the reason we get errors is that right now Brackets doesn't know which rules to follow, so it just says that everything is illegal. So it has to be configured. And that can be really, really difficult because as you see, there are a lot of rules and it requires an intimate knowledge of JavaScript to understand and configure them all correctly. So usually we don't want to configure it ourselves, we just want a configuration file. And that is where the magic starts. Ideally, your organization would supply you with some sort of starter pack with the files you need to start every project with various configurations that is used in your organization. If you, if you don't have a starter pack, you can download mine from the description uh, below the video. So this pack, amongst others, include .eslintrc.js, or it could sometimes be .json or something else. But the important thing is the .eslintrc. That configures our eslint. So the whole thing is, we could either copy everything from the starter pack or just the ESLint RC to our own project. And that would give us inside, we can see it doesn't work yet. We sometimes we have to restart brackets after having done it. So let's do that. And now we can see that the errors are gone and instead there are some warnings. This one about trailing spaces not allowed, it's kind of useful. That can be fixed with a beautify. And then when we save, you can see there's one here. Another function is defined but never used and that is actually useful because we now have a function we define but don't use. That is a bit of fluff that we might want to remove from our program. So now ESLint actually works. When we fix the problem, for instance, by actually calling this unused function, the moment we save, we can see that the warning disappears. And now we have no warnings out here in the color, but there's still a warning down here. And if we click on it, we can see that comes from JSLint. And JSLint is a different thing than ESLint. It's actually an older linter and where ESLint is configurable by the rules set in the file here, then JSLint has its own rules and it's not as configurable. So my suggestion is actually to disable JSLint completely. We use ESLint, it does everything for us. So go to the plugins, find the JSLint, it's here, and disable it. When we close, we just have to reload. Uh, watch. And now we can see we have a green check mark. There are no errors in our code. No warnings, no nothing. So that is how we set up ESLint to work with us rather than against us. The important thing to remember is that we must always have an ESLint rc.js file in our projects. If I open another project, you see that doesn't have the file and I open my JavaScript and suddenly I get weird errors like keyword let is reserved. So if I don't have my startup pack anymore, I need to copy 
my ES lint from another file. You can see here I have my project. So I could copy from my earlier project. Just copy the same ES lint for RC file over. Now it's here. I should just be able to go forth and back. And now we see no errors. So always keep a copy of your favorite ESLint RC.js file if you don't get one from your organization. Good luck with ESLint. Sometimes, even after ESLint has worked flawlessly, you will encounter this error. ESLint error, you need to install ESLint in your project folder with npm install ESLint. That has nothing to do with your code, but it's actually something in the configuration of ESLint. If you get this, you need to go to debug Open your preferences file. Let's just have a little more space here for our. And there we have the configuration for ESLint. We have ESLint gutter marks that is displaying the symbols in the gutter. We have that to true, yes. And then we have it's usually somewhere in the bottom. Brackets ESLint use local ESLint. That is set to false and should be changed to true. When we save. Close the brackets preferences, and then we just need to reload, and then it works again.